Now we're going to move to another topic that's of hot interest uh, at the World Health Assembly this year, and that is antimicrobial resistance. Now you heard it at the German Chancellor's opening comments where she said antimicrobial resistance would be one of the key uh, focuses for the G7 this year. Then you heard it again when the Director General, Dr. Margaret Chan, mentioned it in her opening speech, talking about the important priority that this was for member states and what a top priority it is for WHO. So really, uh, a lot of people are starting to flag this as a, a, a top issue of concern. Joining me now to talk about the problem of antimicrobial resistance and, and what WHO is doing uh, to try to reduce it is Dr. Keiji Fukuda, the Assistant Director General for Health Security here at WHO. KG, thank you for joining us. Uh, can you just start at the very beginning for me? A lot of people aren't quite sure what antimicrobial resistance is. Can you just tell them? Sure, Christy. So what we're seeing right now is around the world that a lot of the bacteria and different pathogens which infect people are becoming untreatable with the medicines that we have available. They're becoming resistant to the medicines. And because it's happening to so many organisms in so many places around the world, that's what makes it such a key problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have any questions for KG while I'm talking to him here, you can send them in on Twitter at hashtag WHA68 and hashtag social good. Now, KG, I think I heard you say once, correct me if I'm wrong, antimicrobial resistance is the single greatest infectious disease issue now. Why do you say that? Well, you know, we're always worried about a lot of um, different new pathogens coming up and different viruses and new infections, and sometimes we have big outbreaks. But the reason why I call this the single greatest um, danger from infectious diseases now is because, we're again, we're talking about a really very broad range of bacteria and um, viruses, and the consequences of that is that we're not able to treat infections nearly as well as we could in the past, which means that people who are undergoing surgery are going to have a much smaller safety net. It means that people who have diseases like cancer or diabetes, who are a lot more susceptible to infections, are going to have a much smaller safety net. And it means that people who have common infections like urinary tract infections, pneumonias, children, pregnant women, they're going to have many fewer options. Is there something that people, individuals, can do uh, to try to preserve the medicines that we have as long as possible? Sure. There are a number of different things. One of the things is for everyone to understand that uh, these organisms naturally develop resistance. You know, that's because they're always trying to escape things which are trying to kill them. And um, so when people take medicines which are designed to get rid of the infection, a lot of times people don't take them in the right way. They take them for too short a period, they take them for too long, they take them when they don't need them, and this really contributes to these um, different uh, bacteria being exposed and it increases how quickly we, we get resistant uh, viruses and, and bacteria. And so making sure that you follow the instructions given by your doctors are really important. A second thing is that people often get antibiotics not from doctors. They get them through other means. They may self-treat themselves. They may treat others. And this also can contribute because a lot of times people are using them when they're not needed. So this week at the World Health Assembly, the member states are considering a global action plan for antimicrobial resistance. Talk about why a global plan is needed for something like this and what the reaction has been to it. A global plan is needed because we are literally seeing this phenomenon in all parts of the world. There are no places in the world, literally, where you are not beginning to see resistance become quite a big problem. And um, it's also a multi-sectoral problem, and it's a multi-sectoral plan, which means that antibiotics are used by the health sector, but they're also used in the agriculture sector, and there are a lot of different groups which have uh, important contributions to make. The reception to the plan has been incredibly strong by the member states. They have said, this is one of our big concerns. We need this plan. We want to see it, and we want to get on with the work.
How, how great is the sense of urgency here? I think a, a lot of times we're used to uh, the medicinal pipeline uh, having things coming through it. What is the situation uh, with antibiotics and other antimicrobials? This is a pretty urgent situation. If we take some common situations like gonorrhea, which is a common sexually transmitted disease, in some countries this infection is now untreatable. We have other very common infections like urinary tract infections, which are most often caused by something called gram-negative bacteria. In many instances, we are finding that these infections are becoming either very hard to treat or impossible to treat, and particularly for important groups, you know, groups like in pregnant women. And so these issues are happening now. They're not developing issues, but they are here on our doorstep. And so um, it really adds a tremendous sense of urgency. So we really are facing a situation where we may be back to a pre-antibiotic era. Yeah. Well, I, you know, we call it more of a post-antibiotic era because, uh, you know, I don't think we'll ever go back to a pre-antibiotic era. But we are, we are entering into a, a, a period in which I think it's going to be tough for a while. Mm -hmm. KG, that's all I have time for with you, but uh, good luck with the Global Action Plan approval. Uh, there is so much interest, I think, uh, from the member states, so uh, keep us updated on what's going on there. Sure, yeah. thanks, Christy. Right. Now, it's not just uh, antibiotics, as KG was mentioning there. Uh, all pathogens uh, start to uh, change around the medicines that are trying to control it. Uh, so diseases like HIV, TB, malaria all have the same problem. The reason that this action plan focuses strongly on antibiotics is because we've been working with resistance in HIV, TB, and malaria for long periods of time uh, so that we have strategies going there already. This is the one that's really going to be the, the raising the tide uh, for all of the antibiotics and other things. And like you said, it is a lot of uh, personal behavior that we need to focus on there.